Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. As you can see, we have changed location and we are at my study desk because today we are going to be talking about The main university that we drew from was Nanyang Technological University's business course, so Nanyang Business School. In summary, I will be talking about an introduction, the schools and the courses I applied to in 2019 and in 2020. I will be comparing business schools and why I decided to go to Nanyang Business School instead of SME Business School. And my choice of redrawing why it was something that was good for me. If you hear like noises in the background, that's because my mom's cooking. And I also actually put in a lot of effort, okay? I wrote like a bunch of stuff that I'll be talking about today and covering. So hopefully I wouldn't divert from the topic and I really hope that this video will actually help you guys, especially for those of you who are currently appealing into a course of your choice and I really wish all the best for you guys but in the case where your appeal isn't successful touch wood okay touch wood um, you might want to consider a gap year and I'll tell you um, how it was beneficial for me as well so let's get right into the video before the sun goes down and I literally have bad lighting it's 609 right now and I'm filming this I'll just start off by um, telling you guys what was my application courses in 2019 and the universities I applied for and followed by the application for my 2020 universities which are honestly the same universities as my 2019 applied universities but the courses have some difference. For um, 2019, I applied to NTU, NUS, SMU and Yale NUS, all the big localized universities in Singapore and the courses I applied for NTU was Communication Studies with a double major in Business. My second choice was Communication Studies. My third choice was Art, Design and Media which I didn't submit a portfolio for which is a big mistake because I waited my third choice essentially. My fourth choice was um, art history and literature, both are uh, double majors together. And my fifth choice was um, Nanyang Business School. So for NUS, um, my first choice was Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. My second choice was Business, I think. And I don't remember the rest of my choices, but I remember getting into the faculty or the course called Project and Facilities Management. And for your NUS, I just applied to the school because they don't allow you to apply to a particular course. So yeah, I got into the interview stage for your NUS, but sadly I didn't get into the school and it was honestly one of my dream schools. Okay, so um, the last school that I applied to was SMU and obviously the first choice was business because SMU is known for business. And yeah, my second choice was probably social sciences, but I don't really remember much of it. So that is the courses and schools I applied for in 2019. And for 2020, moving on, um, the universities I applied to is the same as 2019, but the courses have changed. So for NTU, I applied to communication studies first choice, as usual, because I was from a MassCom course in Temasek Poly. So yes, Communication Studies was my first choice again. My second choice this time was English, my third choice is Sociology, my fourth choice is Philosophy, and my fifth choice is Psychology. And for NUS, I applied to Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences again. And my second choice was Architecture, third choice Nursing, and if I'm not wrong, my fourth choice was Real Estate. Yeah. And Yale at US, I actually applied to the school again, but I didn't get an interview invite this time. And for SMU, I applied to social sciences instead of business because I basically went into NTU's Nanyang Business School and I realized that business wasn't something for me. So business is a no-no in my choices anymore. So my first choice was social sciences and that was PPS, which is basically um, psychology, political science, and sociology. 
and I think my second choice was like law or something, which is not possible. Okay, so with that said, um, I'll go back in time and tell you guys about my 2019 decisions and what went wrong with it. So basically, when I first applied to NTU, I would say that I was honestly overly confident because I put literally two double major courses in my choice list. So yeah, that was one huge mistake because Number one, double majors are really difficult to get in even though you are a JC student and you have a really good rank point let's say. It's really difficult to get in through the interview, the tests and all that. So that was my number one big mistake. So my number two big mistake was the fact that I overlooked English as one of the courses in NTU and I automatically thought that English was under NIE which was like a teaching kind of course in Singapore. So that was a huge no-no also because I would have put English as one of my choices, probably like maybe my third choice or something instead of art, design and media. So that was a major regret for me and I really hope you guys will put in careful thought into the courses that you pick and I know you guys already picked the courses and all that but that was something that I personally learned a lot from and I picked carefully in my 2020 application because in 2019 I was overly confident that I could definitely get into communication studies in Wikim We, which is in NTU as well. And yeah, but basically at that point in time in 2019, my GPA, which wasn't exactly that great, it wasn't like a 3.9, 3.8 or anything like that, I saw myself too highly and I thought that I could definitely get in with a GPA of 3.68 even though their 10th percentile which is the minimum grade to enter um, communication studies was 3.71. I didn't even get through to the interview round and that was honestly a waste of my choices I guess because I didn't look at my GPA realistically. Moving on to the choice decision and how I decided to go into Nanyang Business School instead of SMU Business School. And I know that business is a course that a lot of people actually want to get into but they can't go into. I'm not saying that business is a bad course or anything like that. It's a great course. It's just something that I wasn't made for and I had no passion in. So that is why I decided to withdraw. And I really just couldn't handle the curriculum, I guess, because I'm basically not a very mathematical person and statistics and economics really stresses me out. Moving along to my choice decision, basically I compared between um, NTU Business School and SMU Business School. I felt that um, NTU Business School, there were a ton of pros and SMU as well, but I preferred NTU because Firstly, it was three years, my university life would be short enough that I get to go out and maybe um, do a job in something that I'm more interested in, like maybe design and all that because I have a diploma in communications and media management already. I feel like if I go to uni, I should be learning something different from what I did in a polytechnic and from my diploma. So I wanted to venture into business and I felt like it would be extremely beneficial for me in the future as well if I went into business school. Back to the comparison between NTU and SMU, I felt like NTU, the environment didn't seem as competitive as SMU and um, class participation wasn't like a really strong part of NTU, it was more so for SMU. So for me, I feel like I wasn't someone that would participate much in class. So. Um, Class participation kind of scared me, so SME was like, uh, no. Yeah, um, I also felt that NTU seemed more less competitive. I felt like the environment would be better for me to learn in because business is something that I've never ventured into and I'm really new to it, especially statistics and all that, all the numbers. So I really like required more help in that sense and I felt like NTU was a school that could allow me to take some time to learn better. The difference between NTU and SMU is part where you get to choose a, a module I guess. For S SMU it was a bidding system but for NTU it's a first come first serve. So that scared me lesser because I prefer first come first serve. It feels more fair you see but for bidding I 
if I'm not wrong, like you get a certain amount of money to bid on the models you want to take. And yeah, that kind of scares me and adds more stress to me as compared to first come first serve. So that was one of the bigger part as to why I chose NTU instead of SNU. I guess for NTU, one bad thing about it was the distance because it's really far at like Pioneer, Boon Lay, Jurong East, that kind of area and I live very far from there so that was one bad thing and I also didn't opt to stay in the dorms so that was a huge part of it as well and for SMU it was it's just at Dobie God, which is like the central area and it's very accessible so literally no one stays in dorms there I actually went on ahead to go for the Nanyang Business School orientation camps and I honestly just went with business with an open mind. I just thought like if I got in, why not just explore? Maybe I'm good at business, I'll, I'll pick up a new skill and everything would be great, you know. I also um, went on Reddit to ask people um, like how business school is like, I'm, I'm not sure about my choices and all that so if possible I'll be putting the reddit like questions I asked on reddit onto this video so that you guys can refer to it as well and um, so basically I'll be attaching my timetable somewhere also for the benefit of you guys and it was really packed honestly and I'm in group B so there was literally no days of rest at all so every day I had to go to school and for the first year I didn't have to like do the first come first serve thing for my modules because all of them were already set for me all my core modules so there I didn't have to do anything extra so that was a relief on my part I didn't have to learn anything new the system and all that I mean I had to learn the system quite a, a bit to like add drop classes or like switch classes tutorial classes and all that but other than that, I didn't like have to pick additional modules for the first year. When I first went for my stats class, I was the only one who has never done stats before. And that was something that made me really anxious, I guess. Because everyone has done stats before and I'm literally a blur sotong in class. Okay, so it was a little bit hard for me to catch up because um, from a mass comm, I've never done something mathematical related. Everything else was really basic. When I went into business, I also went in with the mind of transferring out into communication studies or English in the next few semesters. I also appealed, don't get me wrong, when I received my results that I got into business school, I appealed at least, I think, two times or three times to communication studies as well as the English but all the times I actually got rejected. Moving on to the juicy bit and my withdrawal from um, MBS. So I actually chose to withdraw after two weeks of studying there. So week two of teaching week that was when I decided to withdraw and I didn't have to pay any school fees because by week two you're supposed to know whether I stay on or withdraw so before that I didn't have to pay anything so yeah that, that's a really good point actually so I feel personally that if let's say you get into a course that wasn't your first choice maybe your fourth choice or fifth choice you might want to do this I wouldn't um, I wouldn't say that I encourage you to do this but I feel like it really helped me like get a hang of school what is it like to be in uni the environment the whole um, NTU environment the courses what it's like to go for tutorial lectures and all that I felt like it was good experience for me for the two weeks I went in with an open mind to learn more about business the course and all that and whether I actually like it because I feel like if you guys decide to let's say go into your fourth choice or fifth choice I feel like if you went in not knowing what to expect with not much expectation and then maybe you end up having a passion for it that would be great and I really encourage you guys to just try out the course that 
you got accepted in for because it might be something you end up liking in the end that's why I actually went into business because I thought like oh you know maybe I might actually find a passion for it while going to school but I didn't so that's another case yeah, so it's actually a really good experience because I got to find out what I liked and what I disliked, my strengths and my weaknesses, all that kind of stuff. I feel that even though you withdraw, you will not get blacklisted from the school list or anything like that. They won't be like, oh, because she withdrew once from this school, I'm not gonna admit her into another course next year or something like that. Nothing like that at all. So there is literally um, no risk for you to withdraw. Okay, that's a risk. The risk is maybe you might not get your first choice next year, but a gap year will always guarantee you some sort of experience if you go for an internship. So it will definitely be fulfilling as well. The cons though I, that I have for withdrawing and like going to the school with the mind of, oh, you know, I'm going to withdraw the two weeks, okay? So the cons is, um, it might be really weird for you to tell your group mates, your friends that you're withdrawing from the school and especially for a group mate, it really sucks because um, by the second week or something everyone will form groups for group projects so yeah, they have to find an extra member if you withdraw so that's a uh, bad point. Other than that, if that cost is not your cup of tea, you really can't see yourself doing it for another four years, then definitely consider withdrawing and reapplying again next year with a more um, fuller portfolio or better portfolio. So yeah, in 2020 as I mentioned earlier, I applied for English and Communication Studies and Sociology and Basically, I was expecting to get an interview for English and take the essay test and all that but all of a sudden, a miracle happened and I actually got to go for an interview with Communication Studies and I actually got in. So yeah, yay me. <laughs> so I feel like taking a gap year or withdrawing from university even though there might be a huge risk, I think if your GPA isn't that bad, you might actually get into the course of your dreams and you shouldn't give up hope and be willing to take the risk, especially if the risk lets you explore more, go into different internships and learn and experience much more, then you should definitely take the time to work on your portfolio and yourself. So yeah, all in all, this entire withdrawal process was something that I will never forget and it's a huge thing that happened to me in my whole life and it was a huge decision for me to make as well because withdrawing is something that not a lot of people do when they get into university. I feel like maybe transferring is more common than withdrawing. But yeah, withdrawing was a really huge step for me and I wasn't sure what would happen to me in the future and all this, it was just so much uncertainties but I'm glad um, for what I've done by taking this gap year and right now like I go into the course that I really wanted to go to and it's my first choice. So yeah, you won't know what will happen in the future. So I'm saying that withdrawing isn't bad. You should know yourself the most. You should know what you're passionate about, what you're most interested in. And of course, ask yourself if you can see yourself doing this particular course for four years of your university life. And of course, ask yourself like what you want to do in the future and all the kind of things. Is your passion good? And whether it's sustainable, kind of, yeah. So that is all for my part of my withdrawal story and I know that a lot of you guys don't really go through withdrawals but I hope that this will help you make a more informed decision and if you're worried if you withdraw from university how is it going to be like whether you'll be able to get into a university again next year please do not worry. That's what I'm trying to say from this video. Do the best that you can to make sure that you make full use of your gap year before applying to university again. And yeah, all the best to all of you waiting for your appeal, your results. And I really hope that this video would be of help to all of you. So yeah, that is all from me today. Um, thank you guys for watching and remember to subscribe if you have not already subscribed.